In previous episodes, we've talked about the use of genetic engineering in order to bring extinct species back to life, or to save currently endangered species. As you might recall, genetic engineering is the use of enzymes or other biomolecules to add, delete, or replace segments of DNA in an organism's chromosomes. What we haven't talked about in past episodes is the use of genetic engineering on humans, which is exactly what a group of Chinese researchers have claimed to do in a recent peer review publication. Welcome to Science Scenes, a moment of science. These scientists used a process called CRISPR-Cas9. CRISPR-Cas9 has recently garnished a lot of excitement as an efficient and targeted genetic engineering technique. It involves the use of bacterial enzymes to target, cut, and replace segments of DNA. The group performed the experiment on 86 non-viable embryos obtained from Chinese fertility clinics. Non-viable means that these embryos could not result in a pregnancy. All 86 of the embryos had a mutation which would have led to a blood disease called beta thalassemia. Beta thalassemia is a disorder which often leads to circulatory problems, abnormal red blood cells, and painfully enlarged spleens or other bone and organ deformities. The scientists attempted to replace the mutated gene leading to the disease with a healthy one. Of the 86 embryos, 54 survived and were genetically tested. Of the 54 tested embryos, 28 had the target gene added. Most of the embryos with the added genes had major issues with this process. Only four of the embryos had the gene successfully replaced in the correct position. The rest had improper fragments added, or the gene was inserted into the wrong sequence. There were also a number of off-target mutations caused by the technique. This means the process scrambled the DNA in other areas. Overall, the research team and the scientific community concluded that the genetic engineering of human embryos is not yet ready for mass application. On one hand, in the future, we can use this to eliminate genetic disease. On the other, we could alter the genetics of a person to create cosmetic changes. Additionally, the current technology has to occur at the embryonic stage. This brings up all sorts of moral and ethical dilemmas. It's obvious that the genetic engineering of humans will proceed, which means we need to open the dialogue between scientists, governments, industry, and the public on how to proceed best. Science is neither good nor evil. It's just a closer understanding of knowledge. What can make it good or evil is the way that we, the people, decide to use it. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Science Scenes. If you liked what you saw, please leave a comment and or a thumbs up. If you didn't like what you saw, give me a thumbs down and go ahead and leave me some constructive criticism in the comments. As always, it would help me out greatly if you clicked the button below to subscribe so that I can keep creating more content, learning and growing as I go. Thanks as always for viewing, and I'll see you next time on Science Scenes.